Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network, and today I'm going to show you how to install the vCenter single sign-on service. Now this is part two of the series, so you should have already created a database for single sign-on in the previous video. Uh, even if you didn't follow that particular video, make sure you have a database that you can point to. Now I've got an RDP session open to my vCenter 5.1 uh, server virtual machine. It has nothing on it, it's just a fresh copy of Windows Server 2008 R2. And I'm going to do a real quick check, uh, let me clear start from scratch here, in that I'm going to pull up the IP, we've got 10.0.0.87. I want to make sure that all the DNS records exist. So first I'm going to do a lookup on the name of the server, which is vCenter51. And those IPs match, they both are 10.0.0.87. I'll do a lookup of the IP, make sure we have a reverse DNS lookup uh, entry in DNS. And there we go, it resolved the vCenter server both ways. So that's important that you have a reverse lookup uh, as not having that installed can cause some some unwanted uh, pain when you're doing the installation of SSO. So I'll get that out of the way. Now in this virtual machine I went ahead and inserted the ISO for the vCenter uh, DVD. Uh, no matter how you put it on there just make sure you have the media available some way. And what I always advise to people is I actually browse the DVD and run the auto run as administrator. Uh, even if you're logged on as administrator, I'm, I'm logged on as a domain administrator, uh, the fact that user access control, UAC, can wreak havoc if you don't go ahead and run as admin. So it's a little bit different than logging in as admin. Let's go ahead and save yourself some pain and do that, even if you have UAC off. Now I've selected the single sign-on install. I don't recommend the simple install. Uh, I think it's... Uh, can be good for some scenarios, but I find that uh, I don't like the fact that I can't really control the install piece by piece. So we'll be doing the SSO install separately. Click install. And most of this is going to be kind of boring next next uh, until we get to the meat of it. So I'll minimize these out of the way. All right, going to click next through here. And I see there's a bunch of patents, except the license agreement. Make sure that you read all of this. I just did really quickly. Now the first choice you have is how you want to create SSO. We're going to do just primary node for a, uh, a new installation. We're not joining any other installation. and We're not recovering one from backup. The next choice is if you want to do a basic install, which is a standalone, standalone single node or uh, a primary node for uh, multi-site. We don't want any of that fancy stuff, just a, a basic install. And now it's time to pick the password for SSO. This is a non-domain account. It says admin at system-domain. Make sure that you have this written down in some kind of uh, password safe and that you don't ever forget it. Uh, I'll go ahead and put in my super secret password here. There we go. And next. Now make sure to choose use an existing supported database. We're not using the SQL Express. That's only meant for small deployments of maybe five hosts and 50 virtual machines. And now we'll begin filling in the data that uh, really came out of the previous video in that the database's name is Wall Network. And the host name is SQL, in my case, sql.glacier.local. And I've got some manually created DB users. So my usernames are the default ones, RSA underscore user and RSA, RSA underscore DBA. And I put in my awesome password here for both those users. And because it's a lab, I just use the same one for both. There we go. So here comes the moment of truth uh, in that if it moves on to the next screen, you know you did it right. Otherwise, I'll show you real quick. Let's say I goofed the password, take a character off of there, it'll pop up and say that the connection has failed. This means, uh, a lot of times this means that the passwords you used in the previous video were not complex enough, they didn't meet the complexity, uh, or possibly that uh, uh, one of the steps were not executed correctly. So just make sure that uh, you get to the next screen, and that means you're good to go. So make sure to use the fully qualified domain name, uh, I wouldn't re recommend the IP address. In this case, for me, it's vCenter 5.1, or sorry, rather, vCenter 51glaciorlocal I'm going to go ahead and use a network service account. Uh, the default location is fine for me. Change it to wherever you want. And the default port of 7444 is fine. 
and install. And this is going to take a little while, uh, specifically when it goes to create and start the service. That can typically, typically take a few minutes. So I'll probably pause this and uh, resume it when it's getting close to being done. Okay, it took a few minutes, but the install is done. You can click finish. And I like to do a quick sanity check by opening up the server manager. And we'll go and say the service. Uh, go to standard mode. Just make sure that the service is running. It's under VMware area. Uh, there it is. So we got the vCenter single sign-on service is started. It's running. Uh, if it was not running or if you saw an error or something like that, uh, you'd want to check that out. And I'll put some links in the post as well as in the comments for where you can get some more information on uh, kind of frequently frequently asked questions on single sign-on as well as some other resources. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.